Welcome to art class. Uh, today is part three of the landscape, uh, vector landscape project in which we're gonna work on the foreground as well as like add some final details. This is my favorite part of the lesson because I get to see your artworks, uh, you know, be finished and look amazing and awesome saw. So let's uh, share my screen and get started. All right, um, so uh, each week we've been talking about the breakdown of the landscape, which it breaks it down into background, middle ground, ooh, and foreground. Well, it's not my greatest drawing with the mouse. So we have our background, things that are farthest away, middle ground, things that are closer to the horizon line, and then in the foreground is the things that are closest to the viewer. And what I want you to notice is how big those things are. Things that are closer to us appear larger. Um, for example, if I zoom in like super duper close, let's go ahead to 200%. If I look super close at these little hills out in this lake, I can actually see that there's trees on them, but those trees are teeny tiny. Now in real life, they're just normal sized trees, but they appear smaller compared to these trees in the foreground that are closer to us. And so we're gonna be working on the foreground today. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate like just again, just reviewing how to use our polyline tool to create some of these details now. Uh, we will be focusing on like how to achieve some of these details and uh, you know how to approach complex shapes using a simple tool, as well as how to incorporate details that may or may not actually be in your photograph that you're using. So let's start out today by just, uh, just diving right into grabbing some of these details here. Um, so because these are insanely detailed, you might find that 200% is just not enough. You might find yourself going to your magnifying glass and continuing to put in zoom in until uh, it's at a reasonable size. Um, and then these shapes are so small that I tend to think of them as just like triangle shapes. So I'm, I'm really, really not super concerned with grabbing every single detail. And very frequently, I will just go ahead and stop the shape. These are small, complex shapes. So I'm going to build it up in multiple layers. I'm just going to set it as a dark green right now. Honestly, that green is not dark enough. I will come back and, and mess with the colors. I'm going to overlap when I start my next shape. And if you are having trouble with the polyline tool, like it is okay if like literally every single branch is like its own little shape. Like who cares how many shapes you take to do this? No one is counting. And as long as they're the same color, like we will read them as the same shape. I'm going to edit that point though, just to pull it over. Double click if I need to edit it. Let's keep going. Like honestly, part of this, I can't even tell what is one tree and what is another. So I'm just kind of like focusing on like, where's the dark, where's the light. Um, in this example, I've like tried to only do the dark areas, but let's just like grab this whole tree here. Actually, I'm still gonna do it in parts. Like, no one will care if it's in parts. If you want to have those like little peaking blue areas, this is a great strategy because like it's leaving those areas, which is nice. Just like having so many shapes now. Um, for a big complicated area like this, I am just like definitely making it out of multiple pieces. It just helps my brain to not try and do um, like one massive shape. I'm just worried about like, essentially I'm gonna treat all of these trees as like one basic shape. There's like one color, one shape, and the details really coming into the like specificity of, of some of these shapes. All right, now, obviously, since I'm doing details, this is essentially gonna take the longest amount of time. So this is like 8 billion shapes and it's gonna be hard to select all of them. So I wanna teach you a trick to be able to select a lot of shapes at once. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag from over here to over here. So I'm on my select tool from here to there. The reason why I chose those specific spots is 
it's all the way above and to the left of my shapes and all the way to below and to the right. Um, and that selected all of my shapes. Unfortunately, it selected my background as well. So I'm going to hold shift and click on my background. That will deselect it. So shift click, it's selected. Shift click again, it's deselected. Let's do that again. Off the page to below the shapes and then hold shift. Shift click the background. And what this does is deselects the background. So that way I can go to arrange group and now all of these colors are together and I'm going to need a custom color because honestly this green is like so much darker. Let's try that on. That's so much better. And to be perfectly honest, like I, it, this is probably going to be the day where I spend the most time on this um, because that was a lot just now and it's, it's like not even that much that's done. But just to show you, again, I'm using on my keypad, I'm using the arrows. I am not dragging this over. I'm using my arrows. And you can see that looks pretty nice. I feel like it actually might need to be like slightly darker. Like now that it's over here. Yeah, that just a little bit of contrast there. And so I totally get the effect of like a tree being there. Let me show you over slightly. Oh, about right there is good. Um, because I can see all these colors through. And so like maybe those don't look like a tree when you look at it by itself, but it totally looks like a tree in the context of this landscape. Um, and if I did all of these trees, I'd probably be working on this for a solid 30 minutes. I will do that at some point, but not for demo. So let's talk about um, incorporating details that are not actually in your photograph. So let's say like this feels very peaceful and quiet and like maybe I want some like birds to be like flying through the sky. Well, birds are not there and I would really like for y'all to not use a scribble tool and be like, oh, hey, look, it's a McDonald's bird. No, 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 no McDonald's birds. Um, we're still gonna be using our polyline tool. We're gonna go to insert image, search the web or image icon, insert image, search the web there. And I'm gonna look for Birds, not thirds, birds flying. Let's see what it pulls up here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So I, I a lot of options here, okay. Um, yeah, that's lovely. I think what I really want is like, kind of like this looking thing. Insert. Now, I know you might be tempted to be like, oh, hey, it doesn't have a background. I'll pop it into my artwork and be done. Hmm, no. Not doing that. You're gonna add it to your reference photo and we're gonna use our polyline tool. I'm creating these from scratch. Um, so first off, is it the right size? I think like, honestly, I looked out and it really is the right size. So let me like also look up one that is not the right size. Let's continue using bird flying and, and just talk about like what happens if you find a picture you like, but it's the completely wrong size. There we go. Let me find one. So like, say I love this bird like taking off out of the water and I want to incorporate it into my work. Dude, it's super massive. Now, I may actually want to trace it at this size, but if I want to trace it, um, actually, <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and trace it at this size. I'd rather y'all, it's easier to trace when it's this big. So let's do it that way just like making teaching decisions. Now, this particular detail is not um, going to be um, super visible. So I'm not gonna focus on like details, um, like the color difference. I'm just, um, let me just make this like a dark purple for now. I don't know, I'll change the color later. I, I'm still gonna trace it in multiple sections because even me having played with the polyline tool like a lot. I'm still not the greatest at tracing around all these like teeny tiny details. And oftentimes instead of trying to trace right on the line, I will trace right around it because no one will be able to tell. And like approaching these feathers, I'm just like turning them into like little triangles. It's gonna be a small detail. So I'm really not stressing and 
it's probably going to be more of a silhouette. So I'm not even worried about like the different wings. Honestly, I've done so much. I want to just kind of close that off because I can just like, I anticipate myself making a mistake soon. <laughs> yeah. Multiple shapes are your friend. With no border color, no one can tell. No one, none is the wiser. The only thing I want to make sure is that I have overlapping shapes. You like, you see how I've got um, this shape here that looks super weird. Um, so I'll just cover that up. Bam. I'm always trying to overlap shapes so that I don't have any weird holes or lines. I'm just gonna go ahead and crop that off. So yeah, just focusing on the silhouette. Like these are landscapes, so these little details are not our like number one concern, but they definitely can add some things to our work. Okay, and then there we go. Beautiful. Alrighty, I'm going to select all my shapes. I probably like, honestly, let's see if I got them all. Did I get them all in one go? All right, no, I didn't. I missed one. Right there. Okay. Oh, I'm missing another one you see his neck. Oh, he's so bad. Okay, and click. Do I have them all? Okay, cool. So I really need to group these together so that they're all one. I can just delete my reference photo and now um, I can resize this. And it's gonna be like teeny tiny. And I know you're thinking, Miss Argain, like did we really just like spend all of that time for like this teeny tiny bird? Yes, totally. It like it looks super cute, like coming up out of the water. Let's, uh, what color do we wanna do? I don't really feel like maybe that teal color. Oh yeah, it's nice. Or I can go light with it. Super light coming, coming out of the water. Oh yeah. So we can play around with it and have some fun. I actually think I prefer the dark color. So it looks like it's coming off. That's a super nice detail. Um, I um, if you have a um, if you have a work that like this one has like almost no details, like I'm going to, you know, do some lights and darks around this area, but for the most part, there's nothing really in the foreground. So maybe I want to do like a camel a silhouette. So search the web essentially adding those silhouettes so I can look up a camel. And uh, ooh, this one is like already silhouetted. So that's probably gonna be like easy to trace. Again, I know you're tempted to just like resize it and put it over there. Like, oh look, Miss Argain, there's a camel. Please watch your size. Um, like, um, you know, like if I have a camel back here, and it's like massive. That looks super weird, right? Those look like those are like little toy, um, toy pyramids. So the bigger it is, the closer it should be to the front. Small, you know, make it the correct size. But you cannot just use the silhouette. You have to actually trace it and create it. I will be deleting any and all photographs um, that are not actually created, and they will not count for you. In fact, they will count off. <laughs> because I've been very clear with my instructions. Oh, I hate that. See, this is why I need to do it in, in um, multiple pieces. What was I even thinking? All right, so let me just go ahead and do this in multiple pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those black lines on there because I feel like that make it easier to like know how many shapes I did. And then I'll just always making sure I'm like overlapping. It looks so weird when at first because it's just like so many lines. Whew. Honestly, I feel like I should zoom in for these legs. They were that was hard to do. And then, you know, like again, this is gonna be like a teeny tiny detail. So I don't necessarily do every single little nook and cranny of this leg. That's totally fine. Again, remember a vector is going to be a more simplified version. And that's okay. I would absolutely do these legs as separate shapes just so I can get that little clear area in between. Cool. 
Well, I'm not digging this little cactus or this little camel dude. Doing my best to line these up, but he looks like a turtle. It's like all these shapes on top of him, you know. I'm probably gonna skip his little harness there. That's like super teeny tiny. I just don't feel like you'll really see it anyway. Bam. Did I do it? Oh, there you go. Cool. Let's do that trick again where I'm going to, um, did I just, okay, this is just me starting my video. Sorry, clicked on the wrong thing. Click and drag and then click off of my background and then click off of that little dude. There we go. Shift click to unselect. So shift click will select it. Shift click will also deselect it. All right, let's get rid of our border. And it is like almost like it's very dark in, in this little world here. So I'm going to go with like a dark red. Try to avoid like solid, solid black. Go for like a dark red instead. And then, oh, please group it so that you can like actually see it in context. And don't be afraid to like let it go off the page. I know it looks weird for its legs to be hanging off, but then, you know, like in context, it's not really like it'll be cropped right there. Very much how these trees, you know, like you can't see the bottom of the tree, but we still know they're a tree. So I, I, I dig this dude. I feel like he should actually be more like in here. Yeah, I dig that. And now let's give him a little shadow. Just to give him some context. I'm just gonna like, uh, so my shadows are on the left here. So I'm just gonna like make a little shadow shape for him. Like the sun is hitting him this way, transparent. And then let's uh, let's do that super dark color again and make it slightly transparent. Do, do custom, transparent. So that's fun. There we go. See, let's go a little shadow. Let's move it up, up the legs. That's pretty nice, right? So that just those uh, little things like that can just like make your work. Um, you know, just like add a little bit of interest. Um, you know, I feel like my artwork with the camel is like more interesting than just like this plain photograph of the pyramids and like same thing like gives it like a sense of realism to include some of those little details right there you know if i trace these i mean how much time are you willing to invest to like make this magical and awesome um at a minimum include some details in your foreground whether those details are traced from your photograph or you've inserted another image and um, included them so let's annotate that, make sure we just kind of stamp our understanding. So for part three, we're completing the foreground, the details closest to the viewer and any other details you want to include. That part's up to you. Oh, I cannot wait to see your finished landscapes and the choices that you made. I'm very excited. Thank you for coming to art class today and have a wonderful day.